ಓಂ ಜ್ಞಾನತಿಮಿರಂದ್ಯಾನಂಜನ ಶಲಾಕಾಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮಿಥೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವೇ ನಮ Hare Krishna everybody welcome to get your bhajan on we'll be talking about ways to improve your life through impre- improving your practice of devotional service and thank you very much for joining us from various places around the world we're also synced up with a zoom call and uh, de- uh, several devotees have joined us from from uh, locations around the world so i first offer my respectful obeisances to my eternal spiritual master his divine grace ac bhaktivedanta swami prabhupad and to all the previous acharyas going all the way back to lord shri krishna in an unbroken chain of disciplic succession and i offer my obeisances to all of you thank you very much for joining the call today and for taking an interest in the topic of improving our practices of devotional service First of all to be engaged in any activity with focus requires that one is convinced that the activity is good for me that's why people generally dedicate themselves to a particular activity whether it's going to school i mean why would somebody take the trouble of going to school if they didn't think they would be better for it later on some people engage in a health regimen oftentimes people take a tonic there's a kind of um pervasiveness to the idea of tonics everywhere you go on the internet you find that everyone has some kind of special formulated uh powder that you can take as a shake or maybe it's uh, compressed into a pill and if you just take this these are the five ingredients that you must have in order to live a healthy life and they go to great lengths to convince you that each one of these is important and that their company presents the purest of all ingredients and it's the best of all and when somebody decides to pay the money that will cost uh, and then takes the trouble to take those pills it's because they're convinced somehow somewhere in their brain they're thinking this will be better for me it's against the normal psychology of human beings or even animals to do things that are painful or that cause distress in the future so the world's running by this idea that we're always searching for something that will make me better make me feel better make me look better <laughs> uh, and um <clears throat> the bhagavatam in the bhagavatam there's um much said by great sages and by krishna himself in the bhagavad gita and in the bhagavatam about how most of these or all of these uh, particular ways that we try to improve ourselves are very temporary and most of them don't work because ultimately we're not the body we're only uh inhabiting the body for a short amount of time the body is not so important there are some chemicals in the body there's a little bit of potassium and some calcium and uh right now water if you've been drinking water hopefully there's still water in your body otherwise you're a skeleton sitting there but it's generally about 80% water water's uh, pretty much available everywhere right now especially here in California it's raining so it's not hugely valuable uh, to people at this very moment and if you take away um the structure of the body and you burn it down it's worth uh in total the chemicals in there if you you're able to salvage them is worth about $2.42 so your physical body is a, a worth not very much not the trouble of uh not worth the trouble of taking out the chemicals and trying to p- sell them on eBay uh you're not going to get very much for the body so think of it analytically is what krishna asked us to do uh to look and see uh, what what's the relative value of this body so <clears throat> don't put much stake in uh keeping the body um eternally uh vital you should 
live a healthy life, says the Bhagavatam. Kama se nendriya pritir labo jiveta yavata, jivasya tattva jignasya narto yasheha karmavi. Yes, be healthy, but for the purpose of increasing your bhajan. Everywhere we look, we find in the Shastra the admonition that you've got to get your bhajan on. If you're a human being, don't miss this opportunity. So the fact is that the human body, as I've just graphically demonstrated, is not that valuable. It's worth $2.42. But the Srimad Bhagavatam says, Labvam sudurlavam idam bahusam bhavante manusham artanam anityam apihadira. It's very temporary, the material body. And as I proved, it's not worth that much, uh, monetarily speaking. However, if you can take that practically um, temporary body and the body that, doesn't, uh, that you can't get much money for, and you can turn it into something, then you're the smartest among uh, the living entities in the material world. Take that which is temporary and uh, doesn't, um, isn't going to uh, leave you any inheritance it's going to go away very quickly, and you change it. You change it over into something that's unlimitedly valuable. That's smart. And how do you do that? By a bhajan. Bhajan means to learn how to, every day, worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead by your own impetus, and uh, following uh, the techniques given by the previous great acharyas. Uh, tat tat karma pravartana. There's various activities that are recommended specifically by the great sages. Some people take up spiritual life, but they just invent. They say, oh, I, you know, I burn this and I smudge that and I, um, you know, I say this mantra, whatever I want to do. These techniques are not very effective because they're speculative. But if you follow in the footsteps of the previous acharyas and how they did their bhajan, then you'll be highly successful. The Srimad Bhagavatam says, Bejare Muniyo Tagre, Bhagavan Tamad Hoksajam, Satvam Vishudam Shemaya Kalpante Yenutaniha. That previously there were great souls, the Mahajans, and they had a method for worshipping the Supreme. And who is the Supreme? The one who's beyond this material nature and is not connected with it at all. This is mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Safram Rajas Tamaiti Prakriter Gunas Tar Yukta Para Iha Ihasidha Se Stityade Hari Varinshi Hariti Samja Shriyamsi Tatra Kalu Safa Tanur Nurnam Suhu. Bhagavatam says that of the three deities, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, uh, Vishnu is the one you want to worship because. He's beyond the modes of material nature, and you can attain the highest benefit of life, Shreya, by worshiping Him. So, that's what all the great sages did, and they did it in a certain way. There is a method, and they taught it. The method goes uh, through the processes of, of the nine steps in uh, uh, pure devotional service, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Parasevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atma, Nivedanam. These are the nine processes of devotional service which are mentioned by Prahlad Maharaj in the Srimad Bhagavatam when his father asked him, what did you learn in school? <laughs> Prahlad Maharaj said, this is the best thing I know about, is these nine processes. So we're getting it from the authorities. We're not making it up. It's not speculative. It's highly effective. So the first step in getting your bhajan on, and really on, the buttons on all the way, every day, is to uh, become convinced that this is the medicine. Because if you're convinced that this is good for me, and that I'm going to be better off in the future for, for doing my bhajan, then you're going to do it. Because we only do what makes us happy. Because... Uh, the uh, Shastra says, Ananda Mayo Bhyasat, which basically means living entities just want to have fun. That's what we're here for. Uh, that's why Krishna created us to enjoy. But how to enjoy? People don't know that. 
the way to enjoy is by having your bhajan fully on. So here's what the word convince means. Convince means to cause someone to believe firmly in the truth of something. I'll say it again. Convince, to cause someone to believe firmly in the truth of something. And it comes from two words. The first is con, which means with, plus visere from Latin, which means to conquer or to overcome. So when you're convinced, you conquer or you overcome all other conceptions. In this context of getting your bhajan on, you're overcoming all other conceptions of what your mind tells you you should be doing right now. Like for instance, if you're surfing the internet, just scrolling mindlessly, that's one thing your mind says, oh, I get a little peace in this. Uh, or you might um, do something else, e even more constructive, like read a book. But what kind of book are you reading? Pinpointing the actual point at which we're doing the highest good for ourselves is what the Shastra tells us as an example in the Srimad Bhagavatam in Divinity and Divine Service. The second chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam says, Sutta Goswami says, Tasmad ekena manasa bhagavan sattvatam bhati shotavya kirtitavyascha jaya pujas chanityada. So he says, therefore, after giving much evidence about our self-interest in life, the highest and most productive activity that we can be doing, tasmad, ekena manasa, means giving full attention. Your mind is in one place. And that is, bhagavan sattvatam pati shrotavya, means to hear shotavya kirtitavyascha, and to chant, jaya, to remember, to meditate, pujas, to worship, chanityada, always, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the protector of the devotees. He's known as the pati, or the, the Lord of the devotees. He's the one who watches out for us. So this is the conclusion of the infallible Srimad Bhagavatam, and when we become convinced that this is the most important activity of my day, then we'll be able to prioritize it. Because if I think that something else is better for me, then I'll do that. And I'll put my bhajan aside and I'll put it as an afterthought. And that's a mistake because that puts us in a situation where we get the worst of both worlds. That means that I'm, I'm guilty, I feel guilty because I'm not doing my bhajan very well. And at the same time, I'm not getting the full result of the bhajans. Therefore, the mind can sneak in and say, Aha, I knew it. I knew it wouldn't work. So really, the problem isn't that it doesn't work. The problem is that I'm not working it. So if you have a program, and it's a valid program, and that's what I'm I'm going through some evidence to prove that it is valid, then you have to work it. And if you don't get something out of it, it means you're not working it enough. And that's why I mentioned in the title, get your bhajan on, you have to turn it on all the way and um, be fully present for your bhajan for it to, to be very powerful. So <clears throat> be convinced. That's the first step. Be convinced. Get convinced. Do what it, you need to do to educate yourself about what your self-interest is in life so that you can be focused on your bhajan. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says this, Param Vijayate Shri Krishna Sankirtan. He says that you will be victorious in all aspects of your life if you take very pointedly to the process of Sankirtan. Samyak Kirtan. It means involve the transcendental vibration or integrate it into all aspects of your life. And by that, you'll be successful. Param Vijayate Shri Krishna Sankirtan. Bhaktivinoda Thakur, in his bhajan, about how the holy name has come into this world, 
it, just to lift us up. He's come for us, each one of us, individually to lift us up. He says, Nam bina kichunahiko ora choda bhuvana His conclusion, Bhaktivinoda Thakur's conclusion, there's nothing else to be had anywhere in the three worlds except for the holy name. That's a very powerful concept because we're always looking for a one-size-fits-all, aren't we? We want that one place where I can get everything. And I try, you know, they put together mutual funds. They're like, I'll, we'll put together, uh, you know, many different kinds of funds from all different sources. We'll put it in one place for you so you can get all the benefit. It's all synchronized in one place. We like that idea. Well, here it is. <clears throat> It's a right there in the holy name. Every uh, benefit that you can get from anywhere else is there through worshiping the holy name in bhajan. Vedeshu yagyeshu tapasu chaiva daneshu yet punya palam pratishtam atyeti tat sarvam idam vaditva yogi param stanum upaiti chadyam. Lord Krishna says at the end of the of the eighth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita that. Uh, if you focus your attention on your bhajan, on your practice of devotional service, you won't be bereft of anything else. Everything else is included in that. One stop. So this is called firm faith, which creates dhritavrata. And I'm saying that this is what it means to be convinced. Convinced means to conquer over all inferior ideas for using one's mental energy and one's physical energy. Conquer over all the inferior things that are a useless waste of time in one's life and give one's full attention, tasmad ekena manasa, one-pointed attention to one's bhajan. So this is the definition. Shraddha shabde vishras kahe sudridhanishchoy Krishna Bhakti Koilis Sarva Karma Krita Hoy. Definition is given in the Chaitanya Charitamrita by Kavaraj Goswami. This faith means strong faith, and it means that one understands that by doing my practice of devotional service, getting my bhajan on, then I'm fulfilling all the other inferior purposes of my life simultaneously. It's all coming to bear through the practice of my bhajan. I'll get everything. And sarva karma krita hoy. Sarva karma means all the other things that I could be doing in my life right now, which are numerous. The mind can come up with unlimited ideas. Bahu shaka hyanantascha. In fact, it does. There's a way in which my mind, left to its own devices, without, without any kind of oversight from me and my intelligence, my mind will decide to do unlimited activities searching for some kind of satisfaction in the material world. And therefore, I have to, as the parent in the room, I have to be the parent in the room through my deliberate spiritual intelligence to inform my mind and my senses that this is what we are doing. And the reason we're doing it is because I've conquered over the inferior concepts in my life and I know that by bhajan, I will get everything else. Everything else is ne that's necessary, everything else that makes me happy, it comes from my bhajan. That's the meaning of faith. And when we have such faith, then we have uh, drudha manash. It means the mind becomes determined that nothing's going to disturb me from my bhajan. I will not be distracted while I am doing my bhajan. And on a daily basis, I will always do my bhajan because it's in my self-interest and the other things are not. So, become convinced and read the uh, transcendental literatures like Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam to become convinced that the purpose of life is to be fully fixed in the process of bhajan. So that's the first uh, section of getting your bhajan on, is getting convinced. And now I'll take a few reflections before I move on 
to the next section, which will be more practical about getting your bhajan on. So let's hear from you either on Zoom, you can unmute yourself and make a comment, or if you're on Facebook, you can write in and I will do the best I can to read your comments. JM, can you see the comments on Facebook also? Yes, uh, there is. Uh, Dave Prabhu has said, working the program, he liked that. Um, Work the program, yes. Okay, who said that? Div McCready. Oh, Div McCready. Well, he's the one who told me about that. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there, there's uh, ways in which uh, there are programs available for people to improve themselves in the world. And in one of them, there's this admonition that you have to work the program. So he told me about that the other day, and it really stuck in my mind that this has to be one of our internal mantras. Don't just expect that because you're connected to Krishna consciousness through um, the association of devotees, well, let's just say, I joined ISKCON, therefore I am spiritually advanced. You have to take personal responsibility to become advanced by getting your bhajan on, which means, according to Div Makriti, that you have to work the program, and you got to work it every day, and you got to work it hard. Just uh, invest yourself in this, at least for some time. It doesn't mean you have to become a Babaji. I'm not advocating that. But I am advocating that we, that I, become serious in the process of uh, doing my bhajan. Thank you very much. Good to hear from Div McCready right out of the box. What other... Um, what other points do you have now in this first section about getting convinced about doing the bhajan? Go ahead, David Rattapuru. I can tell you're ready to jump in. Naimasharanya is also on the, on the edge there, ready to jump in too. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Freshly back from India. Yay. Uh, I, uh, yeah, this is something that I was thinking about, that it's really, it really is what defines us as as sadhakas is to the degree we're surrendering to our own sadhana. And it really makes the distinction between us and those who may be connected to another religious process. Because there's a way I've noticed in Krishna consciousness that we have the complete wherewithal within ourselves to dedicate ourselves to the process according to the degree that we choose to. And in other processes, it's kind of just like an automatic system. And if you're not careful in Krishna consciousness, this process can also become kind of a automatic, um, an automatic process. Whereas, when you really just take your bhajan into your own hands, it can be really transformative. I've noticed. Do you want to refer to niyamagraha and tell tell everybody what that means in relationship yeah. to what you just said? Yeah. So, Rupa Goswami in Nectar of Instruction he makes the point that one of the things that's detrimental to devotional service is following the rules and regulations just for the sake of following them. And uh, he makes the point in the, set, in the verse after that, that what's conducive to devotional service is enthusiasm, and confidence, and patience. So really we can overcome this niyamagraha, this automatic um, religious mood by becoming enthusiastic and confident in our, in our practice. I hope that's okay. Yeah, it's really good. I just say, you know, approach every day as a neophyte. Start over. Don't think that um, I got this now. Uh, start over with, I'm hungry. I'm humble because I didn't get anything yet. And this is the mood that uh, Queen Kunti uh, um, expresses when she says, Janmai Shvarya Shruta Shribir, Edamana Madat Puman, Naivar Yavidatum Vai Tvam Akinchana Gocharam. She says, in order to properly do your bhajan, you have to feel a kinshana. It means, I didn't get anything. I didn't get anything yet. Like, uh, and the more one gets, this is paradoxical, the more one gets a taste for, for chanting and for hearing and for being absorbed in, in Krishna Kata in all its forms, the more one feels that, oh, uh, look, I'm just starting. This is a point that uh, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur brings up in his Madhuri Kadamani. He says, there's a, a phenomenon when somebody starts a discipline, they have what's called Utsahan Mai. It's called early zeal. 
When they first start, they think, oh, I got this. Now I know everything. They have one piano lesson and they say, you know, practically I'm a concert pianist now and uh, everyone should probably worship me because I'm so accomplished. And similarly, when we start devotional service, we might think, oh, yeah, I'm like practically Hari Das Thakur or something like that. But actually, when one really gets a taste, it's very humbling. And one uh, begins to see that actually I'm nowhere. And starting off with that mood that Krishna, I'm helpless and I didn't get anything yet is very, very powerful. You made such good points, Devavrata Prabhu. Practically shot from a cannon he is, coming back from the Holy Dham. Thank you very much. And Naima Sharanya Prabhu, you wanted to weigh in. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for, for sharing these important points, because in this day and age, something or the other will keep coming up, because padam padam vipadam, and it's coronavirus today, tomorrow it's going to be some other virus. And we just need to remember that what we have is the most valuable thing we have in our lives. And we really need to take advantage of that. Because if we don't, then, you know, we just get drowned with whatever is, is coming up. And it's, it's amazing because Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur said the same thing, that of all the 14 worlds, what I have right now is the most valuable thing. The holy name is the most valuable thing. And I was thinking, I was reflecting both from this call and the previous call was, it's so important for us to share this message with everyone. Everyone is feeling so morose. You know, the stock markets are crashing. The virus is, is eating everyone. You know, everyone's feeling so sad. And this is the time when we have to go out and give this gift to everyone. Thank you very, very much, Naimisharanya Prabhu. He's referring to a call we had before this with the North American Sangatan Leaders Team, where we're talking about the huge opportunity we have right now to expand book distribution and look in ways that, we've, uh, that we haven't done before. Yes, and you make excellent points. Thank you. Uh, there, there were a few comments that came in on Facebook, uh, JM. Could you relate them so I don't have to put my hand on the screen? Sure. Uh, there is one email from uh, from Gandharika Keli Devi Dasi uh, uh, from Charlottesville. She says that we are not budging from our budget. That's what you used, uh, you like. Uh, they say at that uh, Sangha. So that might be something which is. What was that? What was the statement? We are not budging from our budget. We're not budging from our budget. Who said that? Gandharika Keli Devi Dasi from Charlottesville. We won't budge from our budget. <laughs> I like that a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Next, uh, Michelle Nestelsk uh, says, Be the parent in the room and do what I've been convinced is in my best self-interest. I think Taravali also mentioned that too, right? I saw a comment come in from her that went by my screen and she also mentioned, Yeah, the, the intelligence, uh, the, the, the buddhi has to be developed. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Evam buddhi param buddhva samstab yatmana matmana jahi shatram mahabaho kama rupam durasadam he says develop your buddhi by hearing shastra and when the buddhi becomes sharp it, it, it then becomes the parent in the room if you let the buddhi get flabby it becomes a couch potato you let the buddhi sit around you give it all kinds of, of nonsense then it becomes like this parent who's home, but he doesn't care what the kids are doing. You know, they're tearing apart the house, shooting bows and arrows through the walls, uh, you know, drinking, uh, you know, eating those laundry balls. You know, he just sits there and he's, he doesn't care. Uh, and that's what happens when the, the booty becomes flabby and, uh, and just sitting there. So every day the booty has to work out. The Buddha has to be on a strong program for DSI, means deliberate spiritual intelligence, so that it develops vivek. Vivek means discrimination about what's good and what's bad. And without having that, the manas and the indriyas just go nuts. And they just run all over the place and your life is ruined, Krishna says. So develop the, the buddhi. Okay, what else do we have there? So there Two more comments which are related. One from Vyangi Devidasi. Uh, if you focus on your bhajan, you won't be bereft from anything else in this life. Uh, get convinced about that. And then a related question from Ronak Prabhu is, 
What are some of the examples in Shastra about the idea that by doing bhajan, all other purposes get fulfilled? Yeah, well, the, the, um, the Bhagavatam keeps bringing us back to these conclusions by showing, uh, especially the Aracharyas say, especially it shows many kings. Kings are supposed to have everything they want. Of course, nowadays, everybody thinks I'm a king because I have Amazon Prime, I have indoor plumbing, I don't have to do anything except for just go online, and I just have to work and make a little money, and I'll live like a king. In fact, nowadays, in, in you know, suburban atmospheres, we have more facilities than the kings of, of yore. So the idea is in the Bhagavatam, there are all these kings, and they have all facility. Anything they want, they just snap their fingers and they get it. And then we find that they fall short again and again and again, like Maharaj Anga. Maharaj Anga was a great king and he had a son who was uh, cruel Vena. And Vena became so bad that it ruined the king's life and he finally just gave up and said, you know, enough of this, I'm leaving. And uh, King Vena... Uh, King Anga was a pure devotee in his own right, but his life was totally messed up, but he went off for a life of bhajan. Chitraketu, another king. Chitraketu, you know, had everything he wanted except for one thing, and that's a son, and that's the one thing he couldn't get. So when he met Angira Rishi, Angira Rishi could have given him the highest benediction, which is that, you know, you become a pure devotee and so forth, but he, he didn't ask him for that. Chitraketu said, Excuse me, Maharaj, but you know, the one thing I really want is to have a son. And Angira said, Okay, you will get, but it's going to be cause of your lamentation and a little bit of happiness also, but it'll be short lived. And Chitraketu thought, No problem, as long as I get what I want, I'll be happy. He was trying to make an, a material adjustment. So then afterwards, as we all know, the son died soon after being born, and then he was thrown into complete lamentation. And then Angira and Narada came back and gave instructions through the dead son by bringing him back into the body. They said, uh, Dear living entity, you took birth in King Trichiketu's family, and why did you leave so early? And the living entity came out through the body uh, of, the, of the little child and said, I don't mean to you know, disappoint anybody here, but uh, I don't recognize any of these people as my parents. <laughs> he said, I've had millions of parents. I'm just passing through one, one family after another, and I, I don't really recognize these parents. Sorry. And from this experience, Chitraketu became very open to doing bhajan. And when he became so convinced of the futility of trying to patch together the material life to make it work or to solve problems on the material level, then what he did was he just took the instructions of Narada wholesale. He said, I'm totally convinced that I have to follow what you say. So Narada gave him a mantra and he also gave him a process to concentrate on the mantra. And within a very short amount of time, Chidraketu was able to realize his Ishtadev or his worshipable deity through the mantra, who is Shankarshana. So there, one example after another, after another, after another, uh, showing in the Bhagavatam that um, even if you're a king, you can get everything you want, you have all the money in the world, you're a multi-multi-billionaire, uh, you're not going to be able to solve the problem unless you come to follow the process of devotional service. You've got to get your bhajan on. What else do we got there? Um, Div Makredi Prabhu also agrees, uh, you're not budging. <laughs> Div doesn't budge from his bhajan. I've seen it. He's, he lines up his books, and this is one of the techniques. Line up what you're going to read, because if you don't do it when you're intending to, to uh, line it up, in other words, put the books out that you're going to read and have it visible. Like right now, I can tell you on my desk... These are two documents I've created. Can you see these? Anyone? Anyone? So these are documents on, on this one. I have my chad. So I do it like this because it's easy for me to carry. See, I can fold it up, 
put it in my bag, and wherever I go, it's available. And these are the Bhagavatam verses that I'm working on because I'm studying for the Bhaktivedanta exam, and these are verses that I have to know for that. So now I have these ready to go at all times. And the books I'm reading, I have lined up, already open to the pages where I'm reading from. So now, if I wake up in the morning and I see this, I know where I'm supposed to go. So help, though God helps those who help themselves, and we can help ourselves by following the Div Makriti method of lining everything up ahead of time. So you have your little budge on corner where all your books are lined up, you know where you're supposed to go. And when there's a decision to either distract yourself in something useless or to sit down and just do your bhajan, you're going to be more apt to do your bhajan if your books aren't hidden and if the materials that you're going to be reading from, or I should say spirituals, are, um, if they're readily available, you'll go for it. What else do we have? Those are the comments so far. Okay, now a few uh, practical points. Regulation is really good for the senses and the mind. So the more you can pull towards regulation and find uh, a time when you do your bhajan, a natural time, that will be very much helpful. Uh, because uh, just like a car, my father used to teach me that you know, a car likes regulation. If you leave a car sitting for a long, long time, it's really bad for it. In fact, right now, a lot of airlines, even though, even though the airlines right now are not uh, booking up fully, to say the least, some of them are flying empty because they have to keep them flying. A tank in the military, the worst thing for a tank is to stay pinned down and not moving. It has to move. So in the same way, uh, we have to keep uh, moving in our bhajan and it's good to be regulated and know uh, when's the time I do it. The, the senses and the mind thrive on bhajan. The next principle, which is universal for a good a practice of devotional service, is to be vigilant in counting. Count your rounds carefully. When you're doing your, ra- your one round, make sure you're counting the beads properly. Because the more you do that, the more the mind is held to account. The mind wants to cut corners, it gets lazy, but you'll make it strong by being careful to stay to your counting method. This is called Sankhya Purvaka. So that applies also to the books that you're reading. So as an example, if you're reading every day and you make a specific vow, let me show you on the back of these documents, let's say these I'm reading every day, On the back, whenever I'm doing this, you'll notice these numbers. I put at the top, it says goal 108, that I'll read this document 108 times. And each time I read it, I put a number and the date. And I have uh, some of my previous uh, sets of shlokas where, you know, I'll have 200, you know, and it goes for pages. I can show you next time of where I've written in, okay, I just finished my uh, chanting this, and I wrote the number on the back. And then uh, you'll notice, at least I do, when I start getting up around 50, 75, 100 times that I've recited it, first of all, the days would have gone by anyway. They would have passed me by. But at least I did that. I made an investment. I put it in the bank, right? (laughs) And then I start to notice, hey, I actually am familiar with these verses now. How did that happen? How did I become familiar? Did it happen by magic? Did somebody download it into my brain while I was sleeping? No, I took the trouble, I arranged it, and now I know them. And it's a great asset in my life. Uh, So count how many times you're doing it and have a goal because our minds, our human minds are goal-oriented. The next concept for, uh, for getting your bhajan on is associate. Associate with those who have a high level of bhajan, and you can do that by staying in touch, by asking questions through email, by getting in touch through Zoom, or if you, you're fortunate to have someone locally, spend a little time uh, just even observing people who are on a higher level of bhajan than you are, and watch them because you can emulate 
their mood. You'll even see their body language when they chant. You'll see the way they um, organize their lives and you'll become very um, enthused by that. I'll give an example. There's, um, <clears throat> there's a devotee I've seen recently um, who is um, extremely fixed in bhajan. He sits for his, all his rounds. Uh, he's very well read and so forth. And just by being around him for a little while and observing him, then it leaves an impression on my mind that I would like to be more um, fixed in my practice. Um, I can just see it rubs off on me, so that a kind of association is really important. Now, um, we are running out of... Oh, no, we're not running out of time, are we? We, we, we still have a little more time. I have several more practical concepts, but I want to see if there's any questions or comments based on the points I just made about regulate, count, and associate. RCA, go ahead. That's just incidental noise. It wasn't somebody asking a question. Okay, Kamala is saying... Is that how we should be memorizing these shlokas? Yes, that's a good way to do it, Kamala. Here's another example. I have a suitcase full of these uh, cards. Can you see this? Yes. You can see it? Yes. On Facebook, can you see it? Yes. Prematurangri, can you see this? On Facebook? See, these are uh, shloka cards good old pieces of paper and um, on it are written verses now if you carry these around with you yes you can see it okay thank you Kamala and, and Prima Tarangani uh, if you carry these around with you I recommend carrying seven one two three four five six seven you see seven cards when you take the trouble to write these out a shloka on each one, or very important points that you want to um, uh, memorize, and you carry these seven little cards with you wherever you go. I put them in my pocket here. I feel like Mr. Rogers. Put them in your pocket. <laughs> and let's just say I'm sitting there, and um, uh, okay, my wife and I are heading for the temple. We go out. Uh, I sit down in the car, and she says, oh, I forgot my bead bag. I'll be right back. Okay, how long is that going to take? Well, it could take 30 seconds. It could take two minutes. Let me see what happens. She steps out and I pull this out. And now, what would have been a situation where I'm going, what, taken you, what took you so long? I'm thinking, take your time. I'm busy here. I don't mind. You go to the line at the, uh, <clears throat> at the uh, where's the place now? Costco. Everyone's lining up in Costco to buy everything that they can so, so that they don't have any discomfort over the next few weeks or months. And now, let's say you're waiting in line, pull out your cards and start going through them. And I have people all the time that see me in lines and I'm, everyone else has this face on where they're looking around and they're going, why can't things hurry up? They're totally caught in the, this, uh, this uh, gears of time and it's grinding them up. And I'm sitting there absorbed in my cards thinking, I don't care where I am as long as I have my cards. So these seven cards are a really good way to memorize and keep them always in front of you. Okay, what else, uh, JM? We have a question from Facebook, uh, from Divyangi Devi Mataji. What to do if there are not many fixed up devotees in your association? Well, here's a, here's a point that... Um, has been very helpful to me over my lifetime in devotional service, and that is to um, develop your own cabinet. Cabinet means, for instance, the president of, of the United States or prime ministers in other countries, they have a group of people that uh, work with them in their administration to attend to specific parts of the management. For instance, there's the Department of Education and there's a cabinet minister for that. And there's the Department of Defense and there's a cabinet minister for that. Somebody who has experience and expertise. And, 
and then the president will refer to that person who, f who specializes in that. So what I recommend is you uh, think of yourself as the president of your corporation, which is Get Your Bajan On, Inc. And you get yourself a cabinet and you find out who are the best people on the planet right now that can help you in a specific area of your life to ask questions. For instance, uh, when I want to know what Prabhupada said or thought about a particular issue, I get in touch with Giri Raj Maharaj. He's, uh, you know, one of my, um, well, he's not in my cabinet. I'm more in his because he's, <laughs> he's my da. He's my, uh, you know, mentor. But the point is that he's, whenever I have a question along those lines, if I talk to Giriraj Maharaj, he'll tell me, yes, this is what Prabhupada said in this specific situation. If I want to find out what the commentaries, the deeper commentaries are, because I can't figure out exactly what something means, then I have another devotee who is totally absorbed in, he's an expert in Sanskrit since he was a child, and he can look into things a little more deeply and tell me uh, what the acharyas have said. And this way, I'll have at least 12 or 15 people on my Rolodex that I can get in touch with at any time that will help me. So you have to develop your own cabinet, Divyangi, Devidasi, are you listening? You have to develop your own cabinet and collect these kinds of experts in your life, serve them, uh, request them to help you, and then keep them on your list so that when you need help, you know who to call. This will help you immensely. What other questions do we have? Uh, that's all for now. Okay, so the next, yes, uh, Naima Sharanya Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Mark. So you did speak about how we need to read and study, more, mostly study. And I've also noticed how you're able to relate different verses when we have discussions. And you do that in many of your classes at ISV. Can you give us some practical tips on how we can develop that aspect of the study? Yes, you have to practice. Just like, um, you know, in normal times, of course, everybody stopped doing everything right now, but there's a, um, there's a park near where I live called Washington Park. And when I go on my daily walk, I always walk through Washington Park because there's a lot of beautiful trees there. And oftentimes there's a baseball game going on or practices. So the kids go out there and there's, you know, they'll have a coach and the coach is out there and he has them practicing things over and over again. Uh, a man on first, man on third, ball goes down the middle to the shortstop, where do you throw the ball? And he keeps doing it over and over again and one of his, one of his mantras, I see him, he's clapping his hands, he goes, muscle memory, gentlemen, muscle memory. <laughs> he says that over and over again. Keep practicing. So when, when you get used to practicing, for instance, if you sit down with a, a devotee or a couple of devotees, or even with yourself, doesn't matter, and let's say you start reading the Bhagavad Gita like this, and you're going through the purport, and Prabhupada quotes from somewhere and in, the, uh, in the purport, and you see, uh, okay, here's a quote, like I'm looking for one right now, he'll quote from the Brihad Aranyaka Upanishad 1.4.10. It is said, Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman, I am spirit. Now look that up. Where does it come from? What is its origin? Look at it really carefully and pull that out. And then within that commentary, you're going to find another reference. So you can start pulling out a lot of different books. Also, um, Prabhupada was not lazy. He didn't want us to be lazy. When he was reading or discussing philosophy, he would always um, have this technique where he would say, find out that verse. Did you ever hear that? When he's doing darshans and he said, he'll say, or he's, maybe he's talking to somebody and then he'll say to his disciples, he'll find out that verse. So then the, the disciples would scramble and they'd open the book and they'd say, okay, here it is. And Prabhupada would read it out loud. So play, find out that verse. Whenever you're working, don't be lazy, but look it up and take time. You can get the um, Prabhupada Shloka book, which has 
99% of all the verses that he frequently quoted. And when you hear it, look it up. And when you get in that habit, muscle memory, gentlemen, muscle memory, you start seeing how everything's interconnected. And when you're saying them, they're going in. So you keep practicing. Thank you. You're welcome. Edwin Prabhu has a question. Who does? Edwin, I can just unmute him. Hare Krishna. Oh, Edwin. Hare Krishna. Hey, uh, so like, for instance, if you have like a set schedule for your bhajan and like, your chanting, say you have a day where you're, you have some things come up and you kind of get behind, is it best to just like play catch up the next day by like doubling up? what you did or just uh just like start off uh where you left off and just kind of move your schedule forward well it depends if it's your rounds i suggest you always make them up because that's the one place where um shila had made a, a hard stand he he never made that adjustable he did actually because he started with 64 rounds and then he kept bringing it down to 16 he said no mas, that's the bottom. And you do that every day no matter what. So like, let's just say if you forgot one round and you realize that, oh my God, I chanted 15 rounds yesterday, make sure you make it up the next day. So there's a way in which th that, that's a hard line or you should try to keep that in your life. Or if you're not up to 16 rounds yet, so let's say you're, you know, you're at four, just make sure that you stick at that level, don't go below because then it's, the, the more times you do it, the easier it becomes to do. Uh, the more times you make an exception, the weaker you become in, in making, and, and the more exceptions you'll make. As far as your reading and other kinds of things go, yes, uh, just try to pick it up again and keep it going. If there's some emergencies going on and you couldn't quite finish uh, what you were going to do, just make sure you take it up and you keep the vibration going. The other point is that there are a lot of gaps in our lives I made this a little bit earlier, but the fact is, when I'm traveling, I don't have the facility to just do everything at the time I, I like to do it. But I make sure that I carry things with me so that in the gaps, I'm able to finish them. For instance, I have a, a certain number of pages that I read every day. So now, say I travel somewhere, when I'm flying, I have to read it. And then when I get to the place, there's a lot I have to do in the morning program. And then, then let's say we're driving out on Sankirtan. So when I get in the car, I pull out my pages and I ask the driver, whoever else is in the car, do you mind hearing a few shlokas right now? And then you're ready and you start doing that and you make sure that you hit your mark. I hope that helps, Edwin. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Good to hear your voice. Hare Krishna. What else? Anyone on Facebook? There was one question uh, which came through email. Uh, does bhajan solve problems? Oh, does that bhajan solve problems? Who wrote that? It's anonymous. It's an anonymous. Okay. Do bhajans solve problems? Yes, they do. Your bhajan will solve problems. Problems come about in the mind. The... Prahlad Maharaj says, there are no problems in this world except for the uncontrolled mind. If you meditate on that point, it's all our perspective. And the way we develop perspective, proper perspective, is through uh, bhajan. You're going to get a higher perspective and be able to be above the ocean of material worries and problems by doing bhajan. Uh, and Prabhupada says that you don't have to be way above it. You only have to be at least one inch above it to not drown. So don't think that you have to be Haridas Thakur. You have to at least be above the ocean of worries. So if you have a good japa session, which we did yesterday, we did japa online, right? And because we we're all together and everyone was focusing on chanting without um, deviation, we had this mantra that you put the mantra in your mind and your mind in the mantra, and they become one, and you keep bringing your mind back so you can stay in that position. When you have that, after your japa session, you'll walk away and you'll think, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm seeing the world in a way that I'm able to um, 
not become overwhelmed by the various problems. And I can say in my daily life, uh, in certain projects that I'm, I'm managing, there are unlimited problems. That's what management means. It means dealing with one problem after another. And when I read Prabhupada's books in the morning, my mind gets set to deal with all these problems in a way that it, it's not, a, um, not able to do if I don't do my, my reading in the morning. It gives you a, a much higher perspective. So you have to do it every day. And yes, it will help you solve problems. It's the only way to ultimately solve the problems of life. Thank you, JM. What else? We just have a few minutes left. So any last comments that you have? or a, a question, now's the time. I have one last point. Was there something, J.M.? No, nothing. Okay. Um, we know about the Constitution of the United States. It's a document. You can go visit that document. And uh, it looks like Morgan just had a question, so you can check in on that. Um, it's a document that defines what the purpose of the United States of America is. And then after that was made, there was a Bill of Rights and there were um, some other addendums that were made. But it's all spelled out. So if you take time to write down uh, for yourself why you're doing your bhajan and what the parameters of your bhajan is, are, then you'll find... Um, that um, you'll be much more determined. The reason the United States is, has held together is because they have a document. So hold your bhajan together by making your own document. So have a cabinet and have a Magna Carta. Be the, be the head of your, your institution of bhajan. Yes, what was that last question that's coming from um, the Facebook? Yes, yeah, so there was a comment from Vyanagita Mataji. Uh, I like the point that we must be regular in our bhajan, chanting as well as reading. I try my level best to do that, but some of the days, due to my material engagements and spiritual shortfalls, I am not able to spend the time that I really want on reading, even not able to read at all except doing my chair. This something sometimes pulls me down. Can you please share some very practical uh, tips to overcome this situation? Yeah, don't pull yourself down. Just do what you can do every day. Uh, do you, find out what your ultimate um, bottom line is in your practice and make sure you complete that. And the other points uh, in your bhajan that you can increase, then when you get an opportunity, increase them. You're very busy. You've got a lot to do. Uh, you're taking care of family. You're taking care of your work. You know, it, so while you're going through different phases of your life, uh, um, cement in your very basics that you won't do without. And then when you do get the chance, add in uh, the, the extra things and you'll be okay. And there will be different eras in your life when you have more opportunity and you can do more. There will be different periods in the month when you can do more. So take advantage of those. But always remember that even if you're doing the very minimum uh, and you're holding the line on the minimum, you're doing a huge amount and it's very, very significant. And there's a point about doing quality over quantity. You have to do your 16 rounds, but, and even if you can only read, you know, one verse, uh, go into it deeply and remember it. And don't worry that you weren't able to keep up with a lot of the numbers. So don't discourage yourself. There are a couple of more questions. Uh, Alex Prabhu has a question. Why sometimes shlokas go in, but after continuously repeating them for a long time, they start to go out? Well, um, partly because that's the nature of, of the material world. Even as in the 11th canto, Krishna says to Uddhava, the message of the parampara disintegrates over time. That's why we have to keep refreshing it. So, uh, don't think it's just you, it's everyone, the whole material, except for Krishna. The whole material world uh, is uh, being uh, dismantled at every second. 
and what to speak of our memories. So we refresh, refresh, refresh every day. That's partly what bhajan is. And the second question? Um, Kamala Mataji has a question. In all these years, you must have written down thousands of cards. Do you have do you pick randomly and take them with you, or do you have a method? For that? I do. I have a suitcase full of cards. <laughs> um, at at various times, I'm inspired by various verses, and I just happen to write them down. And um, it's, in some senses, in that way, it's random. At certain times, there are certain shlokas I needed to learn for tests I was taking or particular talks I was giving, so I've, I was deliberate about that. But in the aggregate, if you look at it, it looks very random. And it gives me an archaeological history of my life when I look through all these different cards and I think, oh, I remember that time in my life. Some of the cards, I'm happy to say, are very old and worn. And some of these uh, pages I have, I can show next time, they're so worn out. I've, had them, I've spilled things on them. I've, uh, I've torn the pages. I've pasted them back together. And there are literally, like, I've, I've done some of these sets 300, 400 times. And those shlokas have become my friends. I really, uh, they're there for me all the time because I've done them so many times. And that's what our life is. It's bhajan. And it's collecting these things and putting them in the bank account of your heart. And that's what makes a successful life. And at the end, yang yang vapi smaran bhavam. Your bhava comes from your bhajan. So get your bhajan on and don't worry about the state of the world. It's always going to be changing, but don't let your bhajan change. Go into it with full attention and be convinced, conquer over all these other inferior ideas and just uh, hear a rich Krishna Kata and chant the holy names. Thank you very much for joining us this morning and uh, we look forward to seeing you in the next editions of Get Your Bhajan On. And thank you very much, JM, for helping facilitate all this. Any announcements you'd like to make very briefly? Um. No, we, as you mentioned, we would have a follow-on where we'll provide more uh, details around some of the practical ways in which this can be implemented. Okay, to a station coming to you soon. Thank you, everybody. Everyone, please unmute yourself and say Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. And everybody who's on Facebook, please write Hare Krishna. Keep the Hare Krishna Ma Mantra going always. Thank you very much. Vancha Kalpa the Rishja, Kripa Sinabeva Chapa Titanam Pavani Bio, Vaishnava Bio, Namuna Mahananta Kodi Vaishnava Niki Jai. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Nachari Armarman, Nachari Armarman, Nachari Armarman, Nachari Armarman, hey, Nachari Armarman, Nachari Armarman. Not to the arm, my man, not to the arm, my man.